my favorite Friday the 13th movie, I think, is either... I think it's part three or part four. You don't even know what your favorite one is? You're well, out of here. Get the fuck out of here. You're, you're like, you're not, you're, part you're, you're three big, you're cut. or part Turn four. Back what the fuck? So disrespectful. Remember there was the one Friday the 13th movie <laughs> where the they were trying to stop having Jason be the main villain. They were going to pivot to a new killer. That movie that was five. Was that five? Okay, yeah. That one yeah, I didn't new like beginnings. too much. Because if you notice six was, uh, what was it, Jason Lives? Where like, they yeah. resurrected him with lightning. That That's when Supernatural dark. Jason is born, baby. Yeah, Let's go. Supernatural Jason was born. That's I the third one. Seen, I, you know what, Jason. though? I haven't seen Jason Goes to Hell. I've not seen that one. That's the one I haven't seen yet. It's not That's good. That's the one. other ones. It's fucking it's trash. Weird. It's weird. Yeah, that's what I hear. It I hear Jason to... Goes to Hell is pretty bad. It connects the Evil Dead. Well, they were trying to connect it to. Isn't it the one with the post credit scene? Is the tie in to Jason there's, versus 30? There's Freddy. Yeah, there's Freddy yeah. in that one. And then in the house, there's a prop of the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead movie. They knew how shit the movie was. Oh, my shit's way too loud. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. They knew how shit the movie was going to be. So they had to throw something at the, at the end to like, get works. people excited. Well, this is actually like a genuine question, right? Like, who overall has the better movie <laughs> franchise in terms of quality films, Jason or Freddy? Oh, Jason, without a doubt. Michael Myers. No, I think it's Freddy. I think no it's Freddy because even if the, the dude, last, even if you the last three, bro, even if you four. look at the directors, they go on to do better. Like what? What director of Jason, like the Jason movies, go on after Freddy versus what before Freddy versus that, that, Jason? Not... No, because there's more cre- there's more there's more technicality that, that... there's more technicality that's and that. creativity in a Freddy movie. So where's Craven? Maybe Chris the Craven. first one. The first one no, was all good. Of them. The second one was not good. They all have like music video shits in them. Like, the third one was crazy phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, the fourth if one was okay. Five, six, and the other ones. But the only one that they they were they have all their moments until New Nightmare. Dude, you can't tell me. It, I think it's five when that that motorcycle Freddy scene when he turns yeah. pretty yeah, much into like they, a honestly, cyberpunk Ghost Rider. Okay, honestly, but are there are there listen are there bad. Freddy movies, yes. Are there any, yes. with the exception of one? I mean, bad technically, Friday, the these are all movie. fucking terrible. I know. Well, well, from a cinema standpoint, here's, here's, my, here's my hot take. Okay, I think most of Friday the Thirteenth kinda is just whatever. But I think if you look at like the if you look at the first four movies, I think the first four are the best, and then after that, they kind of become very disposable. But even those first four movies. They're very generic slashers. Like in some ways, they invented some good tropes. In other ways, it's kind of like this kind of they invented the tropes. You're so right. Kinda, that's a that's a hot take. That's definitely you know, a hot I mean, take. Listen, I respect those movies for what they are. I like I said. I think three and four are probably the best ones. I think three and four are probably like, like when you look at the, the 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 series. Those are probably like the cream of the crop ones. The first one, the it's first one swerves Google. you. Oh, the first one swerves you. You don't see it coming. The second one, they use the legend of the little boy to bring Jason to life. Okay, and he's got that iconic potato sack. The third one is probably the weakest of them, but it's still really fun. The fourth one was gory as shit. It, it almost didn't. Even fourth one is, third, I don't even well, think the, the fourth one, one is gory. Well, I, I think the fourth say, one the third is third one's important. Jesus Christ, Lord. part Go three ahead. is important that's because because like, of the, the math. Yeah, the math. Because of the three yeah. D. The fifth one, I believe, was directed by an adult film director. Part five, even though I didn't really enjoy it. I appreciate that they tried doing something different and get like a new killer and try and reinvent the wheel a little bit and kind of like, let's do something different. Let's not do Jason. But the backlash and the fact the movie didn't do as well, it's like, okay, let's just bring Jason back and just go full blown cartoony. Like, let's just go supernatural. It's like, okay. It was so much better. It was such a better decision. To, th- this is my favorite one. Jason Lives is my favorite one. That's the one that was. Because of how over the top it is. is well, no, how fat. I honestly, they added action. It felt like it was the one inspired by fucking Terminator, which is what I wanted. Oh, and yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. it, it was campy. Because that's the one where, like, the guy is trying to warn the sheriff and he doesn't believe Yeah, him, yeah. He's, like, running game. around town and there's car chases Everyone there's like he's a, crazy a, yeah there's an rv flip like yeah the rv oh yeah the rv scene yeah that one is pretty fun yeah it's it's great i love i love jason uh jason lives the most okay I have to ask just to, to circle ask. back i wanted to go back to the first one because uh, okay. the director admits that this is not art none of this this was 100 a business move to copy uh halloween 
he and he made he makes Which, he yeah, says I mean, that all the makes time. Sense. Yeah. yeah, like Friday the Thirteenth was made to capitalize on the slasher popularity because of Halloween. Yeah. Yes, 100%. he was not expecting a sequel at all. In fact, um, it was the, this was an independent movie at the time, and it was such a success that Paramount sweeped in and bought the the franchise, and they wanted a sequel right away for next year. You could do this fast. We know you can. Uh, Sean Cunningham, the director, producer of Friday the 13th, who was also the producer, uh, discovered Wes Craven and gave Wes Craven his shot uh, with Wes Craven's debut, Last House on the Left, which was also uh, a huge exploitation um, cult hit, right? So that guy knows his way around this shit. He went from producing to directing. He knew, like he was like, fuck it, I could do this fast. I want to bite off Halloween. He did Friday the 13th. Want nothing to do with the sequel. Paramount came to him. Hey, uh, we think there's something with this Jason character that you had. Can he just be the bad guy? He was like, nope, my movie's done. The movie's done. I made my buck. I'm okay. out of here. I'm out of here. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, we'll just let other people do it. Yeah. yeah, we'll just let other people. They hired um Steve Meyer also worked last house on the left. He was uh, he was like in the one of the production teams. So he was one of Cunningham's dudes, right? So he he stayed with Cunningham. I think after Last House on the Left, they probably produced some other stuff. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but then he, he eventually mm -hmm. went up that ladder and got to be director for this shit. And he would later move on to do H2O. He did Lake Placid. He did uh, the Mel Gibson movie Forever Young. Um, mm -hmm. He's had quite a quite a quite a quick career. question. Quick question. Yeah. So obviously there was a lot of Friday the Thirteenth knockoff movies after this. Uh, after yes. the First film. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Sleepaway Camp? I love Sleepaway Camp. I uh, love Sleepaway because Camp. Because to I, me, when I look at movies from this era, like mm -hmm. Sleepaway Camp, I think has one of the greatest twist endings in any movie ever. Like to me, Sleepaway Camp, the ending, it's it's so dumb, but it's also iconic at the same I time. I think it's, it's like, very. I kind of respect it. Cause, like, I think it's, it's dark. Ballsy. It's, it's, it's dark. Yeah, it, it's ballsy. That's that nice choice of words there. Uh, so Joseph Zito was the director of The Prowler. Very impressive work. He got to work with Tom Savini in The Prowler. So The Prowler kills are really, really cool. No. Tom Savini also did the original Friday the 13th makeup and then worked The Prowler right after. Uh, Joseph Zito got to direct Friday the 13th, the final I'm chapter. Cause... What the hell is it going on? Yeah, what the fuck, man? Now, keep in mind, these are now Paramount pictures, but Paramount was super embarrassed by this shit. So he pr they pretty much kept, like... They pretty much kept it to, I forget which producer, I think Shan, Sean Cunningham handed it off to a relative or a big producer from the first one handed it off to a relative. And they pretty much, <laughs> this were, these were pretty much like summer camp movies. Like they were literally like how the summer camps were portrayed in the movies where it's like they weren't being paid attention to because Paramount was super embarrassed by these movies. They would just dump them out and they would bank on like a couple weekends and, and then split, right? Uh, but Paramount never talked about these, never did anything. It was still released under their banner. Um, and so they were allowed to do pretty much whatever okay. they wanted to do. The only mandate was be like the last one. <laughs> this was going on. I think this is the best one, honestly. Uh, I love this one. It's an action movie with Jason. And, and, and there was, it did not, RJ, you're kind of right. It didn't take itself serious. Um, it was, uh, you know, it has like an opening, like a James yeah, Bond. Yeah, well, so, some of it felt like it was them trying to do a throwback to the original three, going back to a camp as like the third act set piece and the climax. Well, the a camp was a, like, especially focused on in this one because they even, the camp was open in this one, which never happened in any of the other ones. The camps are always closed and it's a bunch of teenagers going there, uh, trying to open it and ending up having to have this sex. This time those actual little kids. Yes, know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now that 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 gave uh, that raised the stakes, and again, the pacing for this one is fucking awesome, man. I love the there's car chases. You know, people think Tommy's going crazy, so the police are after him. He's trying to save the kids. Like it's just He's, phenomenal yeah. action. James Cameron levels and then nobody pacing believes in the them until the very end of the movie. Yeah, it was great. I love this one. Isn't that also I love the one where they one. chain him to the bottom of the river? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. It also has it also has my favorite. Um, lighting because he was going for hammer horror gothic there was a more gothic feel the other the other friday the 13th movies don't have i think the cinematic qualities that this one have they're very basic they're shot during a lot of them they're shot during the day 
You know, it's like just that's like why Joe's Cameron wrong. By Woods. the way, that's why Joe's wrong. What? And they, they they're they're all connected. Every one of them are connected. They're not just camp story. They all pick up where the last one left off. They're all connected. Every one. More of them. or less. I don't know. I kind of agree with Joe. They feel like you know, maybe. You might be right. There might be a give or take. I think there's argument for both because while it is true, there is consistency in some ways. It could feel like a campfire tale where it's like, well, some things change, but some, some things like some elements stay the same. Like there's an element that, yeah, there is that he got tied up and now he's in the bottom of the lake now, right? That, that element stays in the campfire tale, but it doesn't go with, oh, the ghost dad is the one that put him there, you know, in the New York one. Like, like, look what happens after yeah, New eight, York. Nine the, eight and nine are the only two that don't make any sense. It's like, where the fuck? What the Yeah, fuck? in Manhattan, and he's in he's in New yeah. York, apparently, and then he's in space and after then that he's one. Pock, yeah, he's, no, no he's back at Crystal Lake, sorry. And then yeah. he's back, and after that, they blow him up, and then his body comes alive because he's got squids crawling out of his asshole. They can crawl up into other people's evil vaginas. Venom. Yeah, it's crazy. But the tenth one's really fun. I love the tenth one. Jason X is a great movie. All right, so they were trying to get the rights of Carrie. It didn't work out, but they kept the script and they just changed the name of a psychic girl. Oh my god! And uh, what was her name in this one? Tina. Tina. That's right. It was Tina. Oh my god, Tina. 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 Um, this was directed by John Carl Buell Bueller Bueller Bueller. Bueller. He's a Bueller. very famous. He was one of the up and coming, very famous. Uh, fucking. Uh, makeup artist. He did. He did really good gore. This movie is infamous for being cut up by the MPAA, and it's there's a you. Unfortunately, the like the original negatives were like destroyed of the uncut version, and you could only see it in really shitty quality that they have in the special features, and the and you could actually see how much of a fucking disservice the MPAA did for this movie. The carry battle at the end, Tina versus Jason, is fucking fun as shit. One of the most fun scenes. One of the most different, like this is where it uh, Friday the 13th feels a little different. That fight at the end was felt good. It felt like it wasn't just paying off this movie, but it really did feel like it was paying off all the other movies where Jason's just chasing a girl and then she fucking you know, yeah no she thought she she snapped his but mask this, off. This uh, felt, she yeah. hit him with the light, knocked him down into the basement. Yeah. She fucked him up, dude. It felt like a climax to all the movies preceding this, not just this movie itself. So for me, watching it, it was very cathartic. It was very satisfying, and I loved it. I loved the last, I think it's the last 10 minutes of this movie. It's not a lot, but it, what's there is really fun. I, I loved it. I loved the, the last 10 minutes of this specifically. I mean, I didn't love the whole movie. The, the rest is just basic fucking Jason. It's a Jason movie. It doesn't have the flair or style of part six, but it's still well done. All right, what's after this one? Oh man, it's the one everyone hates. Jason takes Manhattan. Okay, so I see the one clip where he uh, punched the guy's head off. That was awesome. That was the best part. That's the only. This is part. also the, This is the infamous movie that the majority of the movie is filmed in Vancouver. I believe they only had two nights in New York to film. Oh yeah, and and uh, and it's maybe fifteen minutes in New York. The rest is all in that boat. They're on that boat yeah. the whole time. Most of that, but and and if you read the the making of, I'll give you a summary. It wasn't like that. It was a lot of it was it was supposed to take place in New York, and little by little, just the studio too expensive, too expensive, cut it down, boat more, boat more, and it's like this horror story of this director having to hear all this shit. Friday the Thirteenth, whole production, the Ocean Cruise. <laughs> yeah, fucking. They, yeah. they should have just called. They should have just called it. Well, see you, nerd. Talk about this one. Oh, so yeah, Freddy goes to hell. Who's Freddy? That's Jason, dumbass. That's Way to Jason. spoil it. Way to fucking wow. spoil it. Go, say what this is about, senior nerd. So it's about Jason going to hell. Because no, he's a sinner. He no. He's a sinner because he have didn't you ever, Have you really seen have you seen this? No, not really. Cool. Jason X? Yeah. It I was mean, a fun, it was a very fun movie. The fact that the the setup is like a fucking field, a field trip with these students are from the future and they take field trips to, to like study earth. Oh no. In one of the places that's to such to a visit. funny <laughs> ass setup for a Jason movie. Oh it's like God. perfectly stupid. We are getting to post scream, right? So it's at this point that now things are being looked at in a more meta, more let's explore things, not just do the same thing again. 
So it was done from a fan perspective. What they did was they wanted to do this thing where the government has them because they know now Jason always resurfaces and he can never die. So they're studying him. They're trying to get tissue samples to see what his uh, what makes him tick, what why are he could really, live. Are you making this up? No. No, okay. that's in the movie. All right, all right, that's in the all movie. Right, all right. Because I, I couldn't just, remember why they had him. Cry you think I thought frozen. about this more than the writers? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's 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 no, no, no. They thought of this. Oh, wow. Freddy versus Jason's a thing. I forgot about that. There's actually a lot. It more. is so a thing. Yeah, it is. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's, I love every part about it. It's super fun. Even the story premise. Everything except the low rent knockoff Jay and Silent Bob. That's the only part I didn't like about it. You know they wanted Jay and Silent Bob in there. They I bet like, they Dude, did. I bet they, they did. They did Scream Three. Of course we could get them. Nope. They got. I believe they got a Hong Kong director to do this one. And they got Disney's Child. No, they didn't. No, they, they had Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland. That's not Destiny's Child. That's not Destiny's Child. She's a Destiny's singer. Eight. I said a Destiny's in Child. In my opinion, she's eclipsed Destiny's Child for being in this movie. Kelly Rowland's had a bigger impact in my life because I saw this movie. Uh, at least three times in the theaters. I probably saw four, but it, definitely three times in the theater. I had a blast with this movie. I was a huge fan. Ronnie, you who did um, also revitalize the Chucky movies. He's he directed Bride of uh, Bride of Chucky. That's how he got this one. That and Ronnie, one. you yeah, the thing is, know. Ronnie, you like with no ego took that job. Like he wanted a job and he took it. He took Bride of like this guy did like amazing Hong Kong action films back in the day. He did Bright with the white hair. Oh, before that, I guess he did Warriors of Virtue. I guess they tried blending the Hong Kong shit back then. The trail. The the Bright of the White Where are those? They don't have these up here. Oh, yeah, Bright with the White Hair. That shit was that was known as a masterpiece. Um, so yeah, the fact that he did a randomly did a Chucky movie. He did Fearless. I think he died. Did he die? No, he hasn't died. Good. What ended up happening with Jason? over the years is that he became kind of a sympathetic character, even though he would kill all these people, people like kind of like they empathize with him. Like he's just a lonely like kid looking for his mom and all these kids are bothering him. He's he wouldn't bother anyone else. Yeah. Um, and it, that sort of became a thing. So even within the script format of this, I'm glad they sort of kept that where Jason is technically, even though he's killing teenagers and he kills a lot, he has a bigger body count. I particularly Which, felt very sincere and sorry for him when he grabbed that guy's head on both sides and crushed it till his eyeballs came. Yeah, he, he had a way bigger body count, but he's being manipulated by Freddy. So in a sense, he is the protagonist in this. So you're kind of rooting for him at the end fight. Also because Freddy's a little more powerful, especially when he puts him in, in Jason's dream world. I remember... A lot of people had a problem with Jason. And again, this is when maybe the horror community shut this shit down. Because this is in 2003. So we do have internet. And once more, we do have internet communities that would talk and yeah, you know, basically what we do now. So there was a big hoopla when this came out. Of some people were like, why would Jason be afraid of water? Uh, you know, they try to do lore consistency with Friday the 13th with like... Because there's a part where Jason's about to swing at Freddy, and then all this water comes down, and it stops Jason. And then Freddy's like, oh, you're, he could tell you're afraid of water. And then he gets all this water to fall on Jason, which makes Jason go back to his baby self, almost. And like people had a problem with that, because they were like, Jason's always in water. He comes out of water. He shouldn't have a problem with water. And I think there was like pushback from the horror community, when the nerds were trying to seep in there and trying to get this lore shit, and we were like, no, 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 no. This is dreams. These are metaphors, analogies. They represent things. They work in a totally different level when you're in a dream, especially if you think they're real. Who knows what that, that he was feeling when getting hit with that water. So I think it's perfectly justified in a dream world that Jason would be afraid of of water if Freddy knows that if he could seep into his subconscious somehow he's afraid of drowning is what Jason's afraid of he drowned right so even afterwards after that dream sequence Jason is back in the water he literally resurfaces from the water triumphantly from the water holding Freddy's uh, head that gives a wink because they they were they were afraid that we were going to crush little Freddy fans hearts that Jason yeah. won 
And so they gave him a little wink for the Freddy fans. <laughs> but we all know. We all fucking know who won that fight. We know who, we won. Know who won that fight. I like how Jason sets stuff up. Makes, uh, is more of a hunter in this one. He's not just like. The bells and everything that show, like, you're, you run for 20 minutes and he's still The right traps, you. the setups, yeah. they were all great. The first 20 minutes are the best part. And it's almost like a rinse and repeat. It does, like, an opening 20 minutes fantastically. And then it's like, okay, now let's start over again. And now here's other teenagers coming in. It's kind of felt a little weird. But still, like, those first 20 minutes to get the, to the credits. And I think the title comes in 20 minutes in, which was ballsy at the time. More movies do that now, but at the time it was like, holy shit. I want to see him minutes. fight the dude from In a Violent Nature. <laughs> sure. It just it looks phenomenal. It's a very pretty movie. That's what I like about it. Although it's a little bit too dark at points. I do love the look of this movie. I do love the way they shot Jason. I love the lighting. Jason looks great in general. Probably my second favorite Jason look. I love the jacket. I love that they added that. They have a jacket. He has a jacket on. That's fucking badass. Yeah, the poster's great, too. It's a great poster. poster's great. The music was great. I love the music. Um, yeah, really fun movie. Probably my favorite death is... I like the cop, but that was a cool shot. That wasn't really like a cool death. The first one's right there when they're all over by the boats. Those murders were awesome, dude. Like those were the shit. And for, yeah, the, the first ones in the beginning minutes. were probably the best one. The, the campfire, the roasting that girl... Tied up in the bag over the campfire. That was brutal. And I thought that was pretty cool. That um, That's another thing that I thought it was an evolution. Teenagers were really horny in this one compared yeah. to the other. They, like, this was like, well, yeah, they really gave that a shout out, the whole, all the horn balls. <laughs> Caligula. <laughs> from the other ones. Yeah. Holy shit. Is it like, while the kills weren't like creative or like, oh, like there was like a, a brutality to it. Like they even put like, do, 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 type like 70s like greenhouse um that type of like new wave synth shit they tried to like put that in there with some of the kills so it was more about brutality you know if you listen to if you watch the scene of the girl cooking you hear like this bass that john carpenter do, 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 do. you know and i think that was them keeping up <clears throat> this was 2009 so the saw franchise and torture porn is in full swing and so like he's 15 fourth. years old holy shit this was 2009, yeah. Wow. When this movie came out, it exposed a lot of like grifters. I remember that. That there were some people saying like, what? Just Jason runs. Jason doesn't run. And it's like, oh, you expose them because Jason ran a lot in the first four movies specifically. Yeah. It's after he became yeah. a zombie, he, ran in the third he stopped. One. Yeah. That shit gets called out quick. Yeah. And exposed of. Yeah, Jason versus the Blair Witch would be sick. Dude, Blair Witch versus Predator. There. Now we have it. Now we have and it. It's like, it and it's like, and it's found footage in heat vision. <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie. The whole movie's with, heat vision found with, footage. With, with shaky cam. Oh, Fuck my it. God. I, I think we could literally do this in AI right now. 